So, when I say equal parts, I'm going to put a handful of the insulation in. And a handful of joint compound. When you saw I didn't measure, those are just I kind of mix it up with the paper a little bit, and then I'm gonna add water. Hard to get a full handful of this because it's so fine and powdery. So you'll just have to use your judgment. I just want to get it mixed in good so the joint compound is evenly distributed amongst the paper. I want to be able to manipulate it when it's on the rock. And see that color is actually going to be really close to the color of the rock. And then we'll seal it so it'll all accept paint well. Alright, so that's pretty good I think. Alright, let's get some put on the rock. We're just going to come in and fill these joints. We're going to fill the screw holes. And go around and fill those recessed screw heads. I don't think I said that during construction, but you do want to recess the screw heads. So we're going to go do that to the whole thing. So this is why you want to, why I want to make sure I have a little extended time because now I got to go through and texture that. So of what I made, this is what's left. Um, I'm going to set that aside in case I say I need more. But what I've done is taken a couple of cheap brushes and cut the um, bristles down. And I'm just going to go through and try to Give this a little bit of rock texture. Soften some of the points.
This is all going to be covered down here, but I'll do a little there too. This will all have a foam base on it, so I can put the sand down. We're going to do that for the whole rock, wherever we put the joint compound. Alright guys, so you probably noticed a little bit of a change from the previous, the episode 1 video of building the taxidermy habitat, um, and even part of this video, and there's a few reasons for that. Um, first of all, the taxidermist that is actually doing the bear work, uh, he's an incredibly good talented taxidermist. His habitat skills are less incredible. Um, he tends to buy the habitats and then just puts the animals on them. But his taxidermy is incredible. He wasn't overly helpful in giving me dimensions, recommended dimensions for, for this build. Um, and I don't think it's because he didn't know or was being difficult. I just or I, I don't think it was because he was being difficult and wanted to sell a habitat because he just orders them from a company. Um, I think it was just he really doesn't know that much about it and didn't want to be on the hook for giving wrong dimensions. So I did some research and found out that uh, um, the way we had it set up probably wasn't going to work. The tree was mounted almost where this rock is now. Uh, which would put the rock further back and not enough room for the bear. So we put the tree all the way to the end. Um, and then I built the rock bigger because the bear has to be able to stand up more. To, otherwise it's going to take up too much of this platform. So I added this, but I still have to go back and fill these gaps like you saw in the first video. Um, this is the result of our first... Uh, build. I mean, all this is original. I just had to build it up a little more, and I even considered even going higher. But I think we're going to stop there. We're going to mount this right about where it's at, and then he can adjust legs and stuff. Mm. We'll, I might even move it a little bit further back, but we'll, we'll figure that out. The other part of the change is I don't generally make plans. I think of what I want to do in my head and then I go do it. I changed plans midstream on how I was going to do the the earth base, the sand. I showed you the rinse sand before. Um, I've got a couple of different kinds of screen. So I got a couple of different kinds of screen. They're both aluminum. Um, but I need something for the uh, paper mache, or mache, I guess. It's museum quality mache. I did some research, and that's not your typical paper mache. But I need something for it to bind to. You know, otherwise, you put it on here and it might crack and break easily. So if I have it, if I put it over top of this, it's going to kind of go between the cracks. This is going to act as reinforcement. It's going to hold it good and sturdy. I think it'll be more permanent, I guess, is the word I'm looking for. Not really, but I think you get my idea. Um, so that's what I'm, I've changed to. I could use either one of these for that, I think. Uh, this has much smaller mesh, um, so I kind of wanted to opt for that. 
If I wanted to make this a rocky looking structure, I could use this and you know crumple this up and you're going to get jagged edges that would look more like rock. This is going to be sand, so I wanted a little more smooth, so I went with this. Now I don't want it to be completely, that's a counterbalance so it doesn't tip. Um, I don't want it to be completely flat, so when I get that on there, I'll put some contour in it, right? So I can stuff stuff under there and I can put screws through and push that down so it has contour on the ground. So that's my, my train of, my thought process there. All right, so to do this, we need to start, we need to cover this whole styrofoam base. So the styrofoam base, I, I sprayed down with adhesive glue and then I screwed it down as well. So it's on the, the platform and then I cut the edges so it's not just a square piece of styrofoam on there. I just kind of used a saw blade, a hacksaw blade. And then I roughed up the top so any mache that goes through or if it's tight has some texture to adhere to. Again, just my thought process. Probably doesn't matter, but that's what I did. So what I need to do now is continue to put this on. This is like an aluminum gutter screen or something. I'm not sure exactly what it was called. So I'm using staples. And the staple gun. And I am just going to the edges of the edges of that are sharp. I don't want, I need to turn it this way. I'm just going to go through and staple it. Excessively. So it's at six inches and I have probably 20 staples in there. Okay, so that's roughly where I want to put that. So what I've decided to do is Use this around here. This my next piece so it covers. The idea behind this is that uh, I think the heavier mesh, this mesh, will be harder to work around the rock, um, you know, to get it all covered the way I want to cover it. And I think this will, and I can cut out underneath the rock because they're going to need to drill a rod through here for the bear to support. So.
with this back so I can get in there. So with this kind of screen, I literally want the staples. To be. So I don't know if you can see the staples in there. But they're pretty close together. There's a lot of them in there. Thank you. 